السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته معاكم محمد البنهاوي أخصائي الأنف وأذن وحنجرة وأدمن أوف إيجيبشن إي إن تي فورم النهاردة معانا دكتور أحمد يحيى هيتكلم عن إنترستد توبيك أو من الرير توبيكس اللي نادرا إن إحنا نلاقي حد يتكلم فيها عن السكن كانسر الإي إن تي هيد أند نيك أهلا بحضرتك يا دكتور أحمد أهلا وسهلا إزي حضرتك فرصة عادة احنا ان احنا نتلاقى بحضرتك كده وان شاء الله نستمتع بمحاضرة كويسة مع حضرتك والله انا سعيد والله ان استضفتوني في الـ ENT platform it's a very good work يعني وقرر جلد كذا فلو خيرون يعني الصراحة اللي انتم بتعملوا الناس كتير بتستفيد منه فكتر خير طيب احنا will go to start this lecture it's a long lecture and it will cover few topics, all of them can be done in like three lecture, one for cutaneous uh, non-melanotic uh, skin cancer and one for melanoma and the other for facial flaps and grafts and reconstruction. So we'll try to hint a lot of things about this subject as much as we can. So the aim of the uh, lecture is to recognize recognition of different skin, uh, skin tumors and to appreciate the treatment modalities and to see the reconstruction options for the cutaneous malignancy. So we'll start with the anatomy for uh, skin structure. So it contains epidermis, then the dermis, then the hypodermis, and you can see the sebaceous gland, the epidermal gland, the hair follicle, the hair bolt. And histologically, it contains five layers with the stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, Stratum granulosum, spinosum, and bizelle. For skin cancer, it is one of the most common human cancer. It presents almost for people who have post-transplant or have a transplant, so skin malignancy presents 40 to 50 percent. <laughs> Male to female ratio is almost two to three to one. 80 percent rise in the head and neck. <laughs> mean age for basal cell carcinoma will be above 40 years, and for the squamous cell carcinoma will be above 60 years. For melanoma, so it is the fifth commonest cancer in UK, and the incidence of melanoma have been doubled in the last three decades. It presents around 20 to 35 percent in head and neck. The earlier stage to find this cancer, which is the most aggressive one of them, the melanoma, the higher the cure per 
Then this comes the recommendation, which mainly come from ENT UK guidelines 2016. So people at risk should be warned about the correlation between ultraviolet, right, uh, ultraviolet radiation exposure and skin cancer, and should be advised for protection. <coughs> so the etiology for skin cancer so it will be ultraviolet radiation, fair skin, which is mean Pittsburgh type 1 and 2, which is the skin which mainly burns and don't tan. Anized nice radiation exposure, really arsenic acid now. Burn, bur, uh, bur, uh, burns and scarring, so like squamous cell carcinoma can come in previous curve, what we call a margarine ulcer. Immunosuppression. Previous skin cancer or pre-malignant lesion, like the most common would be AK, which is actinic keratose. For melanoma, presence of freckles, which is more than 100 in adult and more than 50 in a child. There's some syndromes associated with skin cancer. The most commonest is xeroderma uh, zero, zero pigmentosa, congenital nevi, albinism, nevoid basal cell carcinoma, what we call a Gorley syndrome, which is mainly associated with multiple BCC. There is some genetic factor associated with skin cancer. So, basal cell carcinoma is associated with a mutation in BT, TH, and B53 gene. <coughs> there is some family history in melanoma, so 5 to 12 percent will find the family history. Four genes associated with melanoma, which is cyclene dependent kinase 4A and 4 ARF melanocortin-1 receptor. So this is our risk factor for melanoma. It's quoted for British Association uh, of Dermatology Guidelines, which mainly, as we said before, fair skin, pale eyes, free color of the skin, uh, dysplastic moles or atypical moles, sunburns, family history, previous history of melanoma or other skin cancer, male sex is more predominant, as we said, two to three to one, Xerostomia pigmentosa and genetics like CDKN21 mutation and vitamin D receptor will form this. Immunosuppressant, most of the skin cancer come in immunosuppressant, like people who like uh, treated by our colleagues in the hematology, so they have high risk to develop skin cancer, as we said before, as well as post transplant patients. <coughs> So when you have a patient who comes to you, have a history of a new lesion which comes to the skin, so you would like to take a full history. What is his job? What is his hobbies? Exposure to sun. So this is one of the head and neck cancer, which the main factor is not smoking or drinking. So the main factor is maybe sun exposure or family history of skin cancer. So you would like, like any lesion, you would like to know history of the present complaint, duration, number of lesions. You want to do a full head and neck examination. <laughs> Normally, this patient will go for a full body examination, but this could be done by our colleagues, the dermatologist, especially if it's a melanoma. They deal with that better. All right. And there's some more common signs for the melanoma in men, like in the trunk and the back, and in women as well. So differential diagnosis. So when you have uh, a case of a skin cancer, you need to be aware that not all of them are malignant, and the some lesion could be benign. So either you can differentiate, like here, according to the process of genetic proliferation, like market atypic nevi, halo nevi, or species tumor, which is a cancer, pigmented spindle cell tumors, which are cancer, or non non-cancer lesions or pre cancer lesions like actinic keratosis, solar lentigo or solar melanotic hyperplasia, or pigmented sarcomas like Kabosi, angiosarcoma, diomer sarcoma, or metastatic disease. Mm -hmm. So you need to be aware there is some lesion could not be a cancer, so not all lesion would be a PCC or a CCC. So in the differential diagnosis, you need to Think about benign lesions as well. 
So actinic keratologist, which is mainly solitary or multiple, uh, color which is white yellow scaly surface as in the pictures. Red and pigmented skin, and this is the histology of actinic keratologists. So risk factors will be the same. Ultraviolet exposure, fair skin, sunburns, immunosuppression. Is it a malignant lesion? Sabri malignant lesion. So 10 to 15 percent. If more than 10 solar keratoses, so it's literally if solitary. So 10 to 15 percent can be transferred to a malignant treatment. So either you will use cryotherapy or curatizer excision, or Ifidex, which is 5 fluorouracil, or Imicomod, which is immunomodulator, 5%, or Solaraz, which is diclofenac sodium. Also, it can be treated by photodynamic therapy. So we will discuss reservation treatment option and see what is he would like to choose and depend about how big is the change inside the field. Is it a lot of changes? You would like to try some creams first before you do a wide excision, which will, and most of, if this very extensive reason like that, it will not be suitable for clear and prioritize. So maybe we'll try some medical treatment first. Also, there is some benign lesions, like what we call chondrodermatitis and divided silicus chronicus, which mainly regular irritation to the skin. It happens mainly in the helix and anti-helix. So patients come to you with solitary painful nodule, which is a small nodule on the helix and anti-helix. You would like to exclude this is not a cancer, not a BCC, not a SCC. So they don't have any change, it doesn't bleed, it doesn't uh, ulcerate, it doesn't increase the size. So this mainly happen to the ear where they sleep on from frequent irritation. So risk factors are fair skin, old pain, repeated trauma, and there is some serious, this is a connective tissue disease. So is it malignant? No, it's a benign. It will not transfer to a malignant, but one of the reasons for excision will be to send for histology as well. So either to avoid irritation, so patient can sleep with a bus sponge with a hollow, or like the sponge that you can sleep on in an airplane, so it has like a hole inside. You can inject some steroid inside. Some people use like small fillers to prevent irritation between the skin and the cartilage. And if it is painful and patient is uh, annoyed from the lesion and want to excise, you will send it, you will all excise the skin and you will protect the cartilage. But you need to discuss with the patient that he will need to sleep on the other side and there is a percentage of recurrence, so it can recur into 30%, which needs further excision of the cartilage and the skin. So we have this lesion which is ulcerating. So differential diagnosis, it could be a VCC and SCC. Could be, it's black in color, unlikely to be a melanoma. But this is what we call a typical fibrocanthoma. So red dome shape, grow to two to three centimeter, centimeter over six months. Surface are crusty, 80% found in head and neck. Risk factor. Elderly patient, sun exposure, an axing radiation, and even immunocompromised, you can see. You can put this risk factor in all the skin cancer. Treatment, and is it malignant? Sorry. So it's really spread. Treatment eye surgery, uh, or more surgery if it is in uh, an area which is very difficult to excise with a big with a good margin. So or 
using curators, which is only done in a very small lesion. So it's a malignant lesion, it's hidden, etc. Curator carcinoma, which can grow up to two centimeters. It can have a rabbit cross, skin color over normal, of normal or slightly pink. This factor may be triggered by trauma. Sun damaged skin, it's malignant. It is mainly benign lesion, but there is a debate about malignant changes or percent of squamous cell carcinoma underlying this lesion. So surgery to differentiate by squamous cell carcinoma, sometimes it regresses spontaneously. So you book the patient for a surgery, examine him, or bring him for photography before the surgery by a couple of weeks, you don't find the lesion. Cryotherapy, if the lesion is less than 5%, curatage and radiotherapy. So, we'll start our main topics, which is continuous malignancy. So, basal cell carcinoma. varies in size from a few millimeters to several centimeters in diameter. Spontaneous bleeding or oscillation. Rest factor. Old men, sun damage, fair skin. We said golden syndrome, which is multiple DCCs, zero, zero stomia, pigment toes. Subtypes, nodular, most commonest, which is the most one we see in the head and neck, with the ruled edges and present of telangiectasia. Superficial, mainly found in trunk and shoulder. Pigmented, one of the differential diagnoses of dark lesions, so it will come to differentiate it with melanoma. Morphoic, which is the most aggressive type of PCC. Micronodular, infiltrative, and basis squamous. Uh -huh. According to the ENT UK guidelines, so there is low risk and high risk. Low risk are nodular and superficial, high risk, morphoic, infiltrative, micronodular, uh -huh. and basis squamous. Diagnosis. Diagnosis of non melanotic skin cancer is usually clinical. So it's uh, and it needs a histology, so we need an excision or a biopsy to confirm the diagnosis. They found that the stretch test have been shown improved diagnosis accuracy in BCC. To refer to your colleagues the dermatology before you go for an incisional or excisional biopsy to do a dermoscope and he may can differentiate what is the subtype of PCC. So we need a pre-excision tissue diagnosis, especially if you are planning to do a graft or a flat. So diagnosis can be achieved by a bunch of biopsy, incisional or a shaving biopsy. For a head and neck, you will go for either an incisional or excisional biopsy under local nazis. If you think it's a pigmented lesion, try to avoid any punch or incisional or shaving biopsy. You need an excisional biopsy. Especially if the area allowed to do that. There is some exception back there. Exophytic cytology for high have a high diagnostic accuracy. So it can be used also for tissue diagnosis, especially if it's a very elderly and friable patient. So you need a tissue diagnosis before you discuss any treatment modalities, including radiotherapy. So the recommendation diagnosis of non melanotic skin cancer is usually clinical. Biopsy or exfoliated cytology is recommended where the clinical diagnosis is in doubt or where histologically feature may influence treatment and barrier to radiotherapy. So this is the TNM classification, which will you apply on PCC or SCC. So normally, T0, no evidence, T2, TS, or carcinoma in situ, T1 less than 2 centimeters with no high risk factor or high risk feature. 
T2 greater than 2 cm, but with no high risk feature. T3 invasion of the middle and mandible orbit, which changed now to two, T2 to uh, sorry, two, two centimeter to four centimeter, and then there is change for T4 to T4A and T4B. So, high risk feature of BCC for recurrence is tumor size more than two centimeter, tumor size the center area of the face or the head area, which including for us the eyes, the nose, and the ears as well. Bully differentiated clinical margin. Invasion into part level four or five. High histological, high risk historical subtype. Histology feature of aggression, renewal, or prevascular invasion. Failure of breeze treatment is it, or is this tumor as a recurrence tumor? Or is a patient is a neurosuppressed? Treatment option. So, medical treatment. Treatment of BCC will be guided by the location of the lesion, the size, the depth, and the histological subtypes. Treatment of it is normally is often surgical, but several medical treatments is available. So radiotherapy, if patient is elderly or frail patient. An anatomical site where radiotherapy is likely to lead to su severe cosmetic and function outcome. Surgery is contraindication or patient choice. Radio survey is normally not used in the former following circumstances with patient age over 50 due to uh, the risk of second malignancy or inferior cosmetic outcome. Site of a previous radio survey. Cartridge or bony involvement, which could be a risk for radio necrosis or near the left half of the upper eyelid due to lacrimal sac damage. So, recommendation. Radiotherapy is an effective treatment for primary BCC and SCC. Photodynamic therapy, in, it's usually mainly used in superficial BCC, which is mainly in the trunk. Topical 5% imic mode, which is immunoresponsible modulator. A small primary superficial BCC, not in the face. This mod GIB, which is a drug licensed for local advanced and metastatic BCC, which is not, not suitable for surgery or radiotherapy. It works on the smooth G protein coupled receptor muscles. This inhibits the aberrant signal pathway involving the Hitchhog genes. They have done a trial, early trial for efficiency in 50% of BCC with mean duration response around 9%. So it is suitable treatment in recurrent, inoperable BCC after radiation or in patients with Gordon syndrome. And very rare cases of metastatic BCC. Destructive technique, curatage, and cutary or cryotherapy can be used only a small lesion less than four millimeters. Some center which is uh, have very success rate or been doing this for a long time, they can treat areas uh, lesions up to one centimeter. With all the grotesque and cutary and creatory, you don't have a histology made. So high and low risk PCC. So low low risk site, low risk tumor, superficial nodular you go for excision margin around three millimeter. High risk tumor, high risk site, you would try to go for a five to seven millimeter. If possible, in the face or head and neck, sometimes it's difficult mm -hmm. to get this margin, or you think about, shall I send it for most surgery or simple reconstruction? So, Clearance margin for lesion less than 20 millimeters, so 3 millimeter excision margin about 85%. If you go for a 4 or 5 millimeter, if it allows to use this in the face, you will get clearance for 95%. If the lesion is more than 2 centimeter or morphoic, you try to reach at least 5 millimeter. If possible, you can go for one centimeter, which I don't think mm -hmm. it allow you for this big margin in most of the cases of the face. So we think about most surgery as well.
So in the case of foremost surgery, with uh, unidentified borders, aggressive histological subtype, size more than two centimeter, localized in each zone of the face, incomplete excision, pre-neural invasion, recurrent lesion, young patients. This is based on the appreciation uh, of dermatology guidelines. Recommendation, so non-infiltrative BCC less than two centimeter in size should be excised with a margin of four millimeter. 45 millimeters, smaller more than 260 millimeters may be taken inside to where reconstructive options are limited when reconstruction should be delayed. So sometimes you remove the lesion with a, a low margin, two to three centimeters. Wait until you have don't do any flaps or reconstruction. Just cover it, leave it for until you have the result of the histology. In a couple of weeks, you will then you will be construction in the flap, or you will go for further excision according to the results of the histology. Where there is the high risk of recurrence, blade reconstruction or most surgery should be used. In case of incomplete margin of excision, incompletely excised non uh, melanotic skin cancer, skin cancer should be discussed in skin MDT, me MDT meeting. As should those uh, with a margin of excision less than one millimeter mark, which is what we call a closed margin. Then you discuss treatment option, either observation, mini lorex tumor will not recur, or re excision, either by starting surgery or marginal control, most surgery, or using as well adjuvant treatments like radiotherapy or topical immunocomo. Uh, if the margin is involved by superficial BCC only, typically it may be indicated. British Association of Dermatology Recommendation for considered the excision of transected BCC include anatomical critical site, infiltrative histology, deep morbid involvement, lab and graft reconstruction. For a recurrent BCC, you try to go for a 5 to 10 millimeter margin. Evidence level recurrent tumor, especially on the face, are at high risk of further recurrence following surgery excision, even with wide surgical marks. The strength of recommendation is A, quality of evidence too. Cutaneous malignancy, so this is the second type, which is the squamous cell carcinoma. So they grow over weeks to months, they may ulcerate, they are often tender and, and, uh, or painful, located on sun exposed sites. Size varies from a few millimeters to several centimeters in diameter. This factor, male LG fair skin, UV exposure, smoking, actin sclerosis, ionizing radiation, immunosuppression, HPV virus, xeroderma zero, uh, zero pigmentosum. Staging, the wide most uh, adopted staging for SCC and BC is the TNM classification for malignant tumor. Skin cancer for the eyelid and miracle cell carcinoma are not included in the staging. Imaging to determine the extent of the primary may be indicated when there is a pre neural involvement, like MRI or bone invasion, you need a CT scan. There is no evidence to support cross section imaging if in the clinical negative patient. Sentinel node biopsy for detection of metastatic disease in high-risk squamous cell carcinoma is only used for, uh, for clinical trial. Mm. In clinically not positive patients, further assessment and management is needed with the following uh, additional points for consideration. Cross-section imaging should be included the barotid. Clinically enlarged nodes should be examined essentially by fine needle aspiration cytology either guided by ultrasound. If it is not diagnostic, treated and it is not diagnostic, you will go for uh, an incisional biopsy or excisional biopsy. This is to uh, allow active staging of patients. This is a classification which, again, have changed slightly. So two, this is the eighth edition, which is T1 less than two centimeter, T2, Two to four, T three more than four centimeter, T four A 
with cross cortical bone and marrow, inv uh, marrow invasion, and T4B tumor with a skull based exoskeletal invasion, including foramen involvement and vertebral foramen involvement to the viewer space. So, the two different things are combined, in addition to differentiate two and three, and the split of T4 to T4A and T4B. Uh -huh. For the nodes, the changes was extra capsular extension, so N3A and N3B, whether clinical or pathologic. Tumor depth is highly predictive for metastasis and local recurrence. Between uh, squamous cell carcinoma less than two millimeters in depth has little or no metastatic potential. <coughs> if the tumor thickness increases from two to six millimeter, rate of metastasis become four percent. More than six millimeter rate of metastasis sixteen percent. Tumor involvement the subcutaneous fat have metastatic rate up to forty six percent. Nice guideline and the royal course of pathologists uh, have used. الو ايوه يا دكتور احمد هو إيه. الفيسبوك وقف العرض بتاع المحاضره لان عشان خاطر ممكن يبقى كان في الصور اللي هي اللي فيها السكين التسرز وكده فانت عارف حضرتك ان الفيسبوك ساعات ما بيتقبلش الايه الحاجات اللي هي بيبقى فيها مثلا اوكي مش عارف والله انا افرج حضرتك الرساله اللي بعتت لي عامه يعني الفيسبوك وقف عرض المحاضره دلوقتي ازاي هفرجها Uh, we will keep trying and let you know if it resolved or no. Please check for uh, Facebook to ensure the the enter. If it enter, I am the end slide. Three, four, five, eight, like that. Three, ten, like that. Okay. Try to do it. Okay. Just I'm afraid. Just so that it can be the result. الصور اللي اتعرضت ولا حاجه ممكن تكون هي اللي لغيت ما فيش ما فيش في صور عيانين يعني ما في صور عيانين لوك اوت ولوك ان ولا عاوز اعمل ايه؟ اه اه ثانية واحدة كده يا دكتور خليك معايا ثانية واحدة ثانية واحدة دكتور احمد امم نعملها تاني معلش كده نجربها كده نشوف طيب ماشي اعمل ايه انا لسه سكريننج اكمل ولا انتوا وقفتوا فين ولا ايه احنا سيف تشينج اعمل ايديت تاني كده واضيف على الجروب تاني كده
تمام يا دكتور حضرتك رجعت معانا على اللايف ماشي قول لي ابدا من هنا ولا اعمل ايه؟ بس انا حصل ببلش على ال على الفيسبوك جروب طب انا عاوز اسكيب بقى الحاجات اللي فيها مع صور ولا اعمل ايه؟ ما فيش مشكله ما فيش مشكله ما مش عارف الصور اصلا من الانترنت فما فيهاش حاجه يعني موجوده على سايت على الانترنت عادي سياسه بقى فيسبوك اي دون نو ماشي احنا وقفنا فين طيب؟ لايف تاني؟ ماشي احنا وقفنا فين؟ لا بيفور جاست لايف تو شو اه ممكن اه من هنا تمام تمام ميديكال مانجمنت تمام اه تمام متاكد ولا ايه؟ انا بس عشان المعلومه حصل بس التكنيكال ايشو ده اه قول لي شوف عاوز تبص فيها شوف فين وقفت فقول لي وانا ابدا منها ما فيش مشكله تمام نبتدي بس بحتى بتو سلايدز بيفور برضه معلش يا دكتور ماشي اه تمام 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 اه هي فعلا كانت لحد هنا لحد ماشي تمام طيب آه. اوكي سو ويل ستارت اجين فروم هير سو نون مينالوتيك سكين كانسر يو كايد ريكومنديشن دايجنوز اوف نون مينالوتيك سكين كانسر يو شو كلينيكال بايوبسي اوف اكسوليتيد سايتولوجي از ريكومندد Where there is clinical diagnosis in doubt or hysteria feature may influence treatment or barrier to reduce therapy. So this is the T and M uh, classification. We'll discuss it in detail in, in mainly in the squamous cell carcinoma with the, with the new changes in the T and M classification uh, 8. So high risk PCC is tumor size more than 2 cm, tumor size center face, uh, which is the H zone. Poorly differentiated clinical margin, invasion of clot level 4 and 5, high risk uh, histological uh, subtitles with mainly morphoid, historical feature of aggression, brain neural prevascular involvement, feature of previous treatment, the tumor is, uh, if the tumor is a recurrence tumor, and immunosuppression. Medical management, so uh, treatment of BCC depends on location, site, and depth, and historical subtitles. Treatment is mainly surgical, but there is some several medical options which are available. First is radiotherapy used for elderly and frail patients, or where anatomical side like uh, to have uh, a severe cosmetic result with radiotherapy and surgery, hmm. or, for, or better functional outcome, or where surgery is contraindicated, patient is not fit for a surgery, or it's patient choice. Normally, you don't like to give uh, radiotherapy if the patient is over 50 due to the risk of second malignancy and, and due to if there is an inferior cosmetic outcome. Site of previous radiotherapy, if there is a cartridge bone involvement to, for the fear of radionecrosis over the left half of the upper eyelid due to the risk of lacrimal gland, uh, uh, lacrimal gland damage. So, recommendation radiotherapy is an effective treatment for primary PCC or SCC. Photodynamic therapy is used mainly for superficial PCC, topical 5% imicomod, which is immunoresponsive modulator, licensed mainly for treatment of small primary superficial BCC. Physiomodigib, which is uh, mainly an antagonist for smooth uh, GB protein coupled receptor molecule, inhibits aberrant signal pathway for the hedgehog gene. It's used for metastatic BCC. Of or uh, which is not suitable for further surgery or radiotherapy or post radiotherapy or patient with Gordon syndrome. There was some clinical trial which show efficiency in 50% of BCC with mean duration of response around nine months. So it is used mainly for inoperable BCC post radiation or in Gordon syndrome or in a metastatic BCC. Destructive technique like retage and uh, uh, cautery or cray therapy used mainly for a small lesion, normally less than four millimeter, in some uh, places which have a big experience in skin lesion or some centers, 
you can use in uh, lesion up to one centimeter. Uh, with cryotherapy and, cur and curatazian cautery, you don't have a different histology. Ha so high and low risk lesion, uh, BCC, low risk, low risk site, low risk tumor, superficial nodular, more than three millimeter. High risk, high risk tumor or site, five to seven millimeter, or consider most surgery. Uh, before doing any and or simple reconstruction. So this is the clearance with the margin. So in lesion less than two centimeters, three millimeter, 85% lesion, four to five millimeter, 95. In lesion more than two centimeter or more four lesion, you try to achieve at least four to five millimeters clearance, 82%, or to try to go to more uh, clearance to one centimeter, which is 95%. This is an indication of uh, most surgery according to the British Association uh, of Dermatology Guidelines. An undefined border, aggressive histo histological subtype, size more than two centimeters, head zone, incomplete excision, renewal, re recurrent lesion, and young patient. So, the recommendation non infiltrative BCC, less than two centimeters in size, should be excised with a margin of four to five millimeters. Smaller margin, two to three millimeter, may be taken in sites where reconstructive patient options are limited. When reconstruction should be delayed, where there is a high risk of recurrence, delayed reconstruction, or uh, most surgery should be used. In case of incomplete excision or uh, low uh, margin or, or narrow margin, less than one millimeter, you need to discuss the patient in a skin MDT meeting. Treatment option will include observation, re-excision, or using of topical imicomod. This is for superficial PCC. So British Association of Dermatology recommendation for consideration of re-excision include anatomical uh, critical site, infiltrated histology, deep margin involvement, flap or graft reconstruction. For a recurrent BCC, you try to achieve five to 10 millimeter. For continuous malignancy, this, uh, you can see they are growing over weeks to months, ulcerating, tender to painful, sun exposed area, varies from few millimeters to several centimeters risk, male elderly, fair skin, smoking, uh, actinic uh, keratosis, immune suppression, your stomach may be told like the rest of the cancer. Staging, so the white accepts changes to the TNM. The, this does include skin cancer for eyelid or mercury cell carcinoma. If there is a brain neural invasion, you would like to do an MRI scan. If there is a bony invasion, you would like to do a CT scan. There is no evidence to support clinical uh, cross-section imaging study in clinical negative uh, notes. Sentinel node biopsy is used only in clinical trial in, in squamous cell carcinoma. This is the TNM classification. This is a new change in the TNF classification, which is changed to 2, 2 to 4, and more than 4, then 4A and 4B. And also the change in the node in N3A and N3B with extra, without extra nodal extension or with clinical extra nodal extension. So tumor depth is slightly uh, predictive for metastasis and local recurrence. Continuous squamous cell carcinoma less than two millimeter in depth have little or no metastatic potential. If the squamous cell carcinoma sickness inc increase from two to six, metastasis rate increased to 4%. More than six millimeter, the rate increased to 16. Tumor involved in the subcutaneous fat, metastasis rates up to 46%. So uh, for the NICE guidelines or the Royal Course of Pathology in the UK, the referral for the MDT meeting, if the depth is more than four millimeters, the uh, seventh edition or the eighth edition as well, it is the high risk on two millimeter depths. Mm -hmm. So the high risk feature for SCC size more than two centimeters, failure of previous treatment, immunosuppression, Depth on invasion more than two millimeter, heart level four, pre-neural invasion, primary site is the ear or hair bearing lip, fully differentiated or undifferentiated. Recommendation, normally for the pathologists here in UK, you would like to make all the reports the same. 
better for improving patient care and help working force in planning and pathology world. Tumor depth is of critical importance in identifying high risk SCC and should be reported in all cases. Approach it imaging to determine the extension of the primary non melanotic uh, skin cancer is indicated when preneural invasion or bone invasion is suspected. In clinically N0 node, Nodrosic imaging is not beneficial, and a policy of wishful waiting and patient education should be adopted. Patients with high risk non melanotic skin cancer should be treated by a member of skin NDT meeting in secondary care. Medical treatment for SCC, multiple treatment modalities uh, existing for SCC, mainly radiotherapy. is an option for adjuvant treatment for patients with advanced tumor or primary modality. For patients who have poor surgical or uh, poor surgical candidate, they also have a role in palliative for peripheral bleeding lesion as an adjuvant therapy in advanced disease stage three and stage four, or high risk T two. They do therapy show decreased local recurrence and increased uh, disease free survival. Immunotherapy can be used to treat some squamous cell carcinoma. Amic mode can be used to treat carcinoma in situ, low risk individual or patient who are of poor surgical candidate. Diclofenac is non steroid and anti inflammatory. They work as an inhibitor for cyclooxygenase 2 enzyme, sought to be abrogated in non melanotic cancer. So, this typical gel is a broad use in actinic crystals. Drugs like cetuximab and others which they work via dermal gross factor receptor inhibitor can be used for treatment of recurrent and metastatic head and neck cancer. They are typically used with concurrent radiotherapy. I think for the head and neck, the cetuximab with uh, the radiotherapy was not I think this trial was stopped in the UK, but this is mainly for, not the skin, for the mainly the head and neck cancer, because I think they, they are not getting better results and have more toxicity than, cyst uh, than uh, cisplatinum, but I don't think this is skin cancer. So for SCC excision margin, Surgical excision of low risk squamous cell carcinoma with margin of four millimeter greater is the treatment of choice. If high risk, you will go for a six millimeter margin if it allowed. Most micrographic surgery has a role in some high risk SCC called cases following MDT discussion. Delayed reconstruction could be used in high risk SCC. Interoperative con uh, conventional frozen section is not recommended in SCC. So you excise it. If you don't want to extract, you will just wait, wait for the result of the formalin histology and go for reconstruction in one or two weeks. Mm. Indication for most micrographic surgery, these are in edge zone face, especially the lip, renewal cross tumor more than two centimeters. Tumor including uh, clinical hard to define, recurrent SCC, which is maybe the highest SCC. Incomplete margins of excision, incomplete excised high risk SCC should go for re excision to reduce the risk of recurrence and metastasis. In closely excised high risk SCC re excision or using of adjuvant radiotherapy should be discussed at the NDT and may be influenced by local anatomy and reconstructing factor. Further treatment of non melanotic. Uh, SEC is indicated and re excision is not possible. Uh, adjuvant radiotherapy is indicated to decrease recurrent rate. So, management of regional metastatic uh, cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma. So, patterns of metastasis. The overall regional metastasis rate of squamous cell carcinoma in UK population have been reported around 5%. This rate can be higher in the presence of adverse histology for uh, anything 33 to 47 for body differentiated or in case of renewal infiltration. 
tumor sickness is strongly correlated with the risk of nodal metastasis. The presence of metastatic node disease is associated with five-year survival of 35%. Lymph node metastasis in uh, male squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck are known to follow different patterns. So they are not like the mucosal malignancy. So mainly the parotid nodes and so the, and the superficial lymphatic system should be addressed. <coughs> in SCC, Sentinel node biopsy studies show a high lack of correlation between the primary skin side and the first echelon of, no, echelon of nodes. So extra jugular nodes and the blotted should be addressed. As you can see, this diagram. Over 50% of squamous cell carcinoma occur on the anti anterior scalp and the forehead and the ear. The blotted is a site for up to 70% of metastatic squamous cell carcinoma. Where the rot is involved, PU plus there is an increased chance of neck contagion, occult, and avert metastasis, 10 to 35 percent. In B, uh, in P plus N plus scenario, the incidence of metastasis in level five across 30 percent. In N plus P zero, the disease is seen for the primary site for the face and upper neck or posterior scab. Incidence of posterior scab sites for an SCC is five percent and similarly it will involve level five. Sometimes you need to have to resect the facial nerve, internal jugular, and accessory sternomastoid uh, according to the disease or the malignancy process. So surgery is a primary modality for treatment of nodal involvement and adjuvant radiotherapy may be improved survival and high risk. The section employed should include established node involvement, extend to this level where there is high risk of ocular disease. In most cases, barotic surgery will involve superficial vertectomy, plus or minus deep loop or facial nerve involvement. Rule of radiotherapy in B plus or N plus disease. So retrospective such as this, that local regional control survival improved by adjuvant radiotherapy in cases of squamous cell carcinoma with neck involvement if the stage is great, greater than N1 or where there is extra capsule spread. Extra capsule spread is seen in 70% of the head and neck squamous cell carcinoma uh, nodal dissection. The, the, therefore, consideration can be given more selectively in node dissection as post-operative radiotherapy would be indicated in majority of patients. So the recommendation B plus uh -huh. N0 resection will, will include barotic tissue and combined with level one to three neck dissection, including external jugular. For B plus N plus, resection should include level five if that level is clinical or radiotherapy involved. Adjuvant radiotherapy, should include level five is not dissect. P0 and plus anterior neck dissection could be managed from level one to four, include external jugular B0 and uh, plus posterior echelon node disease, occipital or post auricular, will include level two to four to five, spreading level one. Consider treatment of epsilateral parotid if the primary site is anterior scalable temple or forehead. Follow-up recommendation. All patients should receive education in self-examination and skin cancer prevention. Patients who have had a single complete excise BCC or low risk SCC can be discharged after a single post-operative visit. Patients with an excise high risk SCC should be reviewed three to six months for two years with, fur with further annual review depend on clinical risk, those with recurrent or multiple BCC should be offered annual review. This is, is the tubo malignant, which is melanoma in situ. So you will go for your ABCD, asymmetry, border, irregular variation, habitable, and evolving criteria risk factor. All patients skin damage for cancer. It's malignant, spleen malignant, carcinoma in situ. So if less than four centimeters, 5% malignant transform, 
for formation more than four centimeters, 50% malignant formation. As I said, malignant event on the evolving sickness, flu, or black desperation, itching, bleeding. Treatment, external biopsy to know what it is and for diagnosis, and then you would go for a margin up to five millimeter melanoma. So you will go for your ABC asymmetry, border irregularity, color variation, diameter more than six millimeter, or vulvic chain, bleeding ulceration, and itching. You will ask about other symptoms, symptoms of metastasis, whether pulmonary, gastrointestinal, hepatic, musculoskeletal, or neurological symptom. You will apply your Glasgow 7 checkpoint, which it changes shape, regular shape, regular color, each two point or minor feature, diameter more than seven millimeter or uh, lesion larger than the other. Inflammation, oozing, itching, ultra sensation. This factor, age 40 to 65, previous melanoma, previous BCSCC. Multiple melanotic nevi, more than five typical nevi, family history, fair skin, type, superficial spreading, lentigo malegna, actual lentigus, nodular, spitzoid, mucosal, dysmoblastic spindle ocular, and then you will go for the basal sickness, which is many millimeters from the granular layer or from the deep. A uh, deep layer of the tumor is not ulcerating. It's the main predictor outcome for uh, the treatment. So this is the slow staging, and this is the Clark staging, whether it's in situ or level two invades the papillary dermis or level three fills the papillary, doesn't go to the reticular liver. Four going to the reticular dermis, or level five going to the subcutaneous. This is again the post classification. Mainly now we depend on birth loop classification. And Clark level was removed already from the TNM classification. So, diagnostic biopsy. Mm. So the sickness of cutaneous melanoma greatly influences both its treatment and its progression. So it's essential therefore to obtain a full sickness biopsy of suspected lesion. Suspected lesion. Excision biopsy is the preferred technique and is aimed at excision of the lesion with two to five millimeter before margin, including a cut off of subdermal fat. This allows accurate assessment of the tumor sickness and deep and depth of penetration. Sometimes excision biopsy is not practical for large lesion, and at that time you may go for a bunch biopsy or incision biopsy recommendation to try to get the full thickness of the tumor. So the main recommendation for an excision biopsy, two to three millimeter. Then you will go for the excision according to the depth. Recommendation, the dermatoscopy can be added to the diagnosis of cutaneous melanoma. Stroke examination after biopsy is essential to confirm the diagnosis and tumor thickness. Cision biopsy is the method of choice. Other diagnostic tests, if you have an lymph node, you will do an FNA guided ultrasound, mm. or you can do a chest uh, X-ray or a CT head, neck and abdomen, MRI if there is neural or metastasis. BET CT scan is more accurate than CT scan or MRI and diagnosis of metastasis. You will do some laboratory tests like lactase dehydrogenase for distant tests. Recommendation staging investigation can be performed for both regional and distant disease. Scanning CT and MRI is recommended for patients with high risk of melanoma. Patients with signs and symptoms of disease relapse should be tested by imaging. Imaging of the brain should be performed in patient who have stage four. This is a TNM classification. This is a staging, clinical and staging. 
on run or not runs inside because yeah, you can get it from this is again the TNM and the staging. This is level 2B, which there is alteration, and the size is more than 4 millimeters. This is the new uh, 7 8 edition of the TNM, so the changes. And instead of uh, T1, now we have T1A and T1B. T1A is less than 2, then, then 0.8 millimeter without alteration. T1B is uh, less than 8 millimeter with alteration or ranging for 0.8 to 1 millimeter. So this will make that T1B can go for a sentinel lymph node biopsy or it have more favor to have a high percent of nodal metastasis. The second change was in N1C and N2C with the stellate and N transient metastasis was assigned to N1C and N2C and N3C. The third thing was the image staging, uh, which was category M1D, added for central nervous system metastasis. This is the summary of the changes. Again. Aggressive feature in staging system include presence of metastasis, ulceration, lymph nodes, late, distance, late lesion, and distant metastasis. T staging is based on Perslow thickness. Perslow thickness is measured from the granular layer of the epidermis to the deep portion of the tumor. Clark level, level of dermal involvement is often reported, is often reported but is not a prognostic significant of, of prognostic significance. This is a prognostic factor, sickening, presence or absence of sensation, number of static lymph node, presence or absence of intransient disease, distant test, skin, lung, and visceral. More prognostic, which is the sickening, increased clock level, ulceration, renewal invasion, late lesion, mitotic activity, and immunosuppression. Medical treatment, neuroma is, main treatment of neuroma is surgery. Radiotherapy could be used for sinus and melanoma, mucosa and melanoma, or a palliative treatment. Or when uh, may not, or lesion which not may available for surgical resection. Immunotherapy could be used for treatment malignant melanoma, which including interleukin 2 and interferon. There is now multiple biological medication approved by the FDA for metastatic melanoma. Recommendation, all patients with continuous melanoma should have their original tumor checked for BRF status and their subsequent target biological therapy based on that. Patients who develop brain metastasis should be considered for stereotactic radiotherapy. So treatment of choice for melanoma is wide local excision with approach to treatment of lymph node in draining nodal basin. Margin for excision depends on the tumor depth. After wide local excision, lymph nodes need to be addressed. In patients with micrometastasis, those bulbar or otherwise known barrier to primary resection, the basin basin should be excised completely through a appropriate bro selective neck dissection, plus or minus protectomy. In patients with no evidence of node disease, but birth depth greater than 0.7, which is now T1B, the clinician should consider and discuss sentinel lymph node biopsy. Sentinel lymph node biopsy should be shown to be the single most prognostic factor in head and neck melanoma. The rate of regional recurrence after negative uh, sentinel lymph node biopsy could be reported to 4%. So this is a different treatment local excision in situ five millimeter lesion less than one one centimeter lesion for one to two one to two centimeter go for the smallest two to four two to three centimeter go for the smallest two centimeter preferred lesion thickness more than four millimeter two to three centimeter think about sentinel lymph node biopsy for any t uh, any a stage above T1B. According to that, you will go for either therapeutic neck dissection and then reconstruction. This is the 
Britain's use of dermatology recommendation, we have discussed it all the same. Recommendation primary cleanliness invasive melanoma should be excised with a surgical margin of at least one centimeter. The maximum recommended excision margin is three centimeter. Normally, go for a two centimeter, which will cover you. The actual margin of the excision depends upon the depth of melanoma and its anatomical site. Most micrographic surgery may have a role in primary treatment of cutaneous melanoma, especially in the face. There is a growing evidence of the efficiency of most micrographic surgery mm. in comparison to traditional surgery, but need more, uh, uh, more trials or more research to be done. Mm. Lymph node assessment in melanoma, 90% of patients with melanoma will have, will have no evidence of lymph node at on presentation. 20% will have an occult neck disease. Elective neck dissection is no longer a recommendation. Uh, Martin has uh, used the sentinel lymph node biopsy in melanoma in 1992. This is how you do the sentinel lymph node biopsy. So either prefer perform it after excision of biopsy and concurrent uh, with different wide local excision. If you uh, colloid is injected into four quadrant around uh, the lesion, one to 12 hour prior to sentinel lymph node biopsy, lymphocytogram, ideal area of uptake in the operative room, uh, isocellular blue dye is injected intradermally. And then you use a gamma probe to identify the hot spot, identify the lymph node that will be blue in the field. Right. Uh, the problem is that uh, the sentinel lymph node biopsy, it has a high learning curve, so you need to do a lot of them to do them. All right. Two probe system, technician and blue dye will increase the sensitivity. This is how the lymph scintography or the sentinel lymph node biopsy. Auckland's lymph node disease, the most accurate meaning of staging of the original lymph node in the head and neck melanoma is sentinel lymph node biopsy. The removal of sentinel, uh, sentinel nodes are historically examined with multiple section and immune histology is staining for the presence of Auckland metastasis. Sentinel lymph node biopsy identification of regional lymph node should be followed by lymphadenectomy of the node at risk. Sentinel lymph node biopsy provide accurate staging information. There is no controversy, uh, there is no controversy at it is, as to whether or not it improves cervical specific uh, uh, disease specific cervical. So, sentinel lymph node biopsy is a diagnostic modality. It's not a treatment. Patient has to understand that, all right, and it will not improve the disease specific survival. But it's it replaced now elective neck dissection. So you go for a sentinel lymph node biopsy, and then according to the result, you will do your neck dissection. So the long term result of the multi center selective lymph lymphadenectomy trial uh, one indicates that the sentinel lymph node biopsy is, uh, is associated with improved disease survival rate. But also, this was questioned in the recent edition of the British Medical Journal. Also, there's some question about the biological force positivity of the sentinel lymph node biopsy. So, sentinel lymph node biopsy have replaced elective lymph node dissection in melanoma. So, recommendation there is no rule for elective lymph node dissection. Sentinel lymph node biopsy could be considered in stage 1b and above by a specialized skin cancer multidisciplinary team. Patients should be uh, made aware that sentinel lymph node biopsy is a staging procedure and should understand that it has as yet no proven therapeutic value. So treatment of the neck, this is where you will do a sentinel lymph node biopsy. We will discuss when, as we said, any, uh, any, any uh, stage above T1B. And the treatment of the neck will depend on the affected at risk node, whether post or occipital, parotid node, superficial, uh, depend about where the lesion phase for head, auricle, anterior scalp, posterior scalp, whether you will do a level two and level three, level four with or you will do 
one to three or two to five, it depends. So if you find the lymph node recommendation, ultrasound guided FNA or core biopsy suspected lymph node is more accurate than blind biopsy. Obvious biopsy should be only performed if FNA or core biopsy is inadequate or equivocal. Barrier to lymph node dissection staging by CT scan should be carried on. If the parotid disease is present without tech involvement, post parotidectomy and neck dissection should be ideally performed. If neck disease is present without parotid involvement, parotidectomy should be considered if the lymphatic drainage of the primary side is likely to have passed through the parotid gland. This is treatment by stage, so labs for stage one, none. Radiology, you can do an X ray. Stage 1B, now you will do a sentinel lymph node biopsy. Excision margin around 1 to 2 centimeters. This is for stage 2, 2 centimeters. Possible elective neck dissection according to the result of the sentinel lymph node biopsy. Stage 2, stage 3, you will do an LDH. Uh, if there is a node, most probably there is a node, you will do a finite advertation guided ultrasound, you will do a CT scan or a bit CT scan or a CT scan MRI scan. Excision 2 cm, removal in, in transit lymphatic basin, neck dissection directed by the size, whether posterolateral, lateral, or sobra uh, there is a big probability of uh, radiotherapy and a chemotherapy after adjuvant therapy. Stage 4, you do full blood count, liver function test, see if there is any metastasis in the liver. Uh, like that, you had resumed uh, enzyme. Uh, CT chest, abdomen, pelvis, MRI, brain. Uh, excision 2 cm, removal in trans in the basin, neck dissection again according to the side. You would use an adjuvant therapy. Uh, radiotherapy or consider a chemotherapy or immunotherapy. Mucosal melanoma uh, is a rare malignancy with poor prognosis. Management recommendations are based upon retrospective cases, series, few or which exceed uh, 100 patients. Mucosal melanoma accounts for less than 1% of all melanomas and less than 10% of all head and neck melanomas. The main uh, the median age of patients represents uh, in, in the 60s. The function of melanocytes in the mucosa is uncertain. Most common sites, nasal and oral cavity, very rarely come to the phallic glands and esophagus. In oral mucosa, uh, located along the tip and briefly of the retis pigs. Unlike cutaneous melanoma, no risk factor for development of this disease have been identified. So it is not, uh, so there is some talk about cigarette smoking or air pollutant may play a role. This is a TNM classification for mucosal melanoma. So there is no T1, no T2, no stage one, no stage two. Uh, for mucosal melanoma treatment options, mid excision, there is no rule for it's radio resistant, and uh, most of the immunotherapy or chemotherapy doesn't work, so it is not, doesn't have a BRF gene, so it would mainly be an excision, surgical excision. This is the second part of the presentation. We'll try to be a little bit fast. I think now we passed an hour and 15 minutes, so we'll try our best. So aesthetic principle, ensure complete excision, consider uh, more micrographic surgery, replace tissue with live tissue, evaluate tissue surrounding donor recipients, replace or missing component, restore urine and aesthetic units. Again, uh, this will be covering maybe the flaps and grafts, so I will run and first, no in details, but well, this is another presentation by so on. So basic of season, mark edge of the lesion using microscope. So you can use a dotted line for that. For uh, air excision, you use a solid line. Decide and draw your flap and graft mm -hmm. as well. Factor affecting reconstruction, size of the defect, location. Important structure surrounding like eye or alar rim. 
Hertzens of adjacent skin. When you think about flaps, think about blood supply comes through the base, lymph lymphatics exist, exit through the base, we have to help lymphatics, so you would try to do mainly the base of the flap inferior. This prevents necrosis and ischemia of your flap. So, shrink, so we try to avoid the high tension in the skin edge. Uh, the skin will become edematous, so don't try to make a very tight suture. Use uh, deep absorber suture to take uh, tension. Close the skin with three or four O monofilament uh, When you do the excision, you first clean the skin with alcohol-free uh, cleaner like aqueous chlorohydrohexidine. Then you do infiltration of local anesthesia, 2% lidocaine with 1 over 80,000 adrenaline, what we call a dental syringe. You inject slowly, try to avoid injection. As we learned, you go from one side, try to inject most of the place, and then go from the area which you already numbed and inject again to elevate the skin. When you do the injection, it will help know you to know the lesion. First of all, try to clear the lesion, remove any crustacean so you can see the lesion well. Then get your microscope, mark the lesion of the dot line, or mark your excision, whether it will be three to five millimeter or whatever you go to three to three millimeter in the face. All right. When you do the injection, you can see where the skin is elevated, and especially in the ear, if the tumor is involved in the cartilage, it will the infiltration will help you to know if the tumor is just in the skin of the cartilage, if the infiltration is easily. Then test your anesthesia before you work on the patient, because the patient on the local, so you don't want to induce any pain for him. So test with the tip of your scalpel. Keep incision to the right angle. Excise the lesion. Mm. First, before you start to do your flap, orient your specimen. Normally, we we'll put two shorts or one long and one short. I normally put one at 12 o'clock and one at 3 and say to him, this is right or left. Uh, I use the long one at 12, the short one at 3. When you're using your flap, again, use a knife or a new plate, normally with the right angle. Do good undermining, do good hemostasis, try not to use a lot of cautery and burn the base of the wound. And this is where your blood supply, your flap will come from. So you don't do a lot of cauterization on the base of the flap or the base of the wound. So just achieve a good hemostasis. This is the facial unit. I think you know it more than me, most of you. So this is the end of election and facial units, with the forehead, the eye, chin, cheek, and the nose. And the nose, you have three single and three double, so nine subunits inside the nose. All right, so I think all of this nose and been covered in other topics are in like rhinoplasty. So, principle replacing the defect with tissue similar to the surrounding tissue in texture and color and thickness. Place scar along the relaxed skin tension line. And normally try to hide your scar between the subunits if the, you can do. Normally, if uh, the lesion is more than half of the unit, try to excise the whole unit. This is a cleanest blood supply, so we have two. Uh, Blood supply one superficial, one deep. So, you see them subtracing and facial and mucofacial. So, this will make you depend about whether it's an axial flap or random flap. Axial flap, which is depend on an in blood supply like the forehead flap or the nasolabial flap, supratrochlear or the angular artery or random flap, which mainly depend on the blood supply between the subcutaneous and the muscular area. So, and then think about your reconstructive flutter, primary closer, secondary intention, split skin graft, full skin graft, composite, local flaps, regimen, medical free tissue processes. Skin uh, 
healing by psychotic intention, mainly in the concave area. You can see the auricle, inner rim, near the medial cancers, but be careful with the contraction near the medial cancer. Primary closure, you can see you draw an ellipse. You draw it with, uh, normally the angle would be around, I cannot see, I don't know, you can see your, my recursion. No, you can't see my, my arm. So the angle is around 30. The, you try to hide the maximum diameter of this ellipse in the skin, skin tensor relaxation line. Right, normally the diameter would be around one to three, as you can see. Uh, suturing would be in this way along the maximum tension lines. So, primary closure, little redundant skin on the nose, easy in elderly patient, defect less than one centimeter, dorsal or side wall, may, produ may produce either tip distortion. So, when you do that, this closure, it may elevate your tip. Skin graft, split skin, full thickness skin graft, donor site, posterior area, subclavicular area. Normally, when you have a skin lesion and you have patient think, always think about three options. So don't think about one option. Normally, think, all right, I can go away with a full skin, skin, uh, full thickness skin graft. Even if it fails, it will heal. It ends with variation. It normally heals in a nice way, not too bad. So this is an option. And think about two other different grafts. So, so if you got stuck, you have another way to come out of it. So this is a full thickness skin graft used instead of uh, split skin graft to avoid contraction. Need intact framework to support. Use like tissue. Best in young patient with thin skin, best in uh, for nasal sideways effect. But you can see even here it healed nicely. Flab reconstruction, uh, reconstruction. So we have flab graft, a ratio two to three to one. Ensure clearance before being clever. We have a hinge advancement, single pedicle by pedicle, by advancement flab. Pivotal, which is trunk position, rotation, and intervalotted graft. Reconstruction, advanced flab, flab is linear, sideways towards the defect, skin of the flab is stretched. You can, it can be univertical by vertical or island. This is a single vertical, as you can see. So you can, you can see here, you can, you need to remove two bar of triangle on the base, all right. Or there is VY advancement flab. This is a by vertical advancement flab. This is the island advancement flap. So advanced linear scar can be left in the skin reduction uh, tension lines. The advances you may have to do is so you need to remove a barrel triangle. It's share a border with the defect. Bifted flap, the rotate around fixed point, generally shorten with increased degree of rotation. They may leave a dog ear at the pivot. So, pivotal flab are rotation, transmission, and interpolated flab. So, you can see this is an example of the three of them. So, this is mainly the rotation. So, we excise the lesion as a triangle. So, we excise around the lesion some skin. So, the effect height to S2 to 1. Length of arc of rotation is 4x, the width of the defect. Sometimes you need to remove some bar triangle on the other side. Try to make it an inferior inferiorly base to help lymphatic drainage. As this is, you can see, 2 to 3x so diameter of the defect, and the arc of rotation is 4x. So the benefits, it can be used as two sides, broad based. So it have a very good plus supply. This advanced right angle closure may not end to be closed in the skin tensor relaxation lines. This is a pivotal transpositional flaps with a rhomboid or bipolar. So this is a rhomboid flap with angle of 60 to 80. You can see the diameter. Uh, 
which, which is bisecting the angle of 20 is equal to the side of the rhomboid. Normally, you try to make the small diameter which bisects the 120 in the skin relaxation tension lines. You can rotate this flap by four four ways. You have eight flaps almost. So if you try to put it on your skin tension lines, relaxation tension line. This is a door new for mental flap, which another variation of the rhomboid flap. So you can see it's a versatile design, so you can do more than one flap. It doesn't share border with the defect, only the base. Normally, the disadvantages they often not, cannot be based on the relaxation skin tension line. Need more wide uh, undermining. They may have a dog ear in the arc of rotation. The bursal or interplotted graft. So there is no shear border of the defect, no dog ear, doesn't distort boundary between aesthetic subunit. This advantage is a two-stage procedure. This is the bi looped flap, which designed main by Acer. So the main original bi loop, the arc of rotation was 180, 90, and 90. Now there is variation of this flap by the Tilly. So normally you try to make the arc of rotation maximum 90 or 100. So you rotate 45 and 45 or 50 and 50. <laughs> and also you excise uh, a borrow triangle at the base of the defect, which help you to rotate. All right, you can see. So you excise this triangle on the base of the defect and then rotate. 45 degree, 45 or 50, 50. You can use this flap on the back of the ear as well. For some leaves. This is a paramedian forehead flap. So it is based on the supratrochlear artery. Uh, normally it is 1.72 1 to 2.2 centimeters from the midline. Uh, normally you can get an ultrasound and know where is your artery and then you can design your flap. The bit can, keep, can be narrow to 1.2 centimeters. This flap can cover the whole nose. Right, so you can, uh, the bridge will be above the glabella or under the glabella. And then you cut it in the second stage. The trick of this flap as well, that you thin the upper part of the flap. All right, you don't want it thick. This is the area which will settle on the nose. So the upper half of the blast, you try to thin it and remove the subcutaneous tissue so you can put it down on your nose, as you can see. Medilabial flap based mainly on the angular artery, so inferiorly based or severely based. As we said, you replace like for like, so if you have a full thickness defect on the nose, you get an oracle cartridge with the skin. You do your flaps from the side for the line of the nose, then you place the cartridge of the skin from mm -hmm. outside. So, which flap to use? Consider the defect, location, shape, uh, relaxation, skin tension, line, availability of local skin, adjuvant, important structure. So, the scale. You can do bilateral rotation flap or OZ. Sometimes the scalp, the effect is big and the glyo tissue and the skin doesn't move, so you end by putting uh, a full thickness skin graft. Forehead, normally used either unibolar or by uh, unibidical or bibidical advanced flap, as you can see here, or V to W. On the side of the temple, you can use A to T flaps as well. So you end with, uh, you excise the triangle and end with a figure of T. This is the extraction of the cheek. You can use medial rotation, nasolabial island flap or rhomboid flap, as you can see here. This is the, the picture down is a cheek advanced flap. 
snows, depend on location, site, and size, with a second intention, fragment closure, or axial random flab, full thickness or composite graph. So you can see, you can do clavellar, by looped, uh, but a median for head flab. So for nasal dorsum, cleanest cover, gravelar flap for head flap, primary closure, uh, for sickness graft, for nasal sideways, for sickness graft, transmission graft, by looped for head, nasal tip by looped for head, for sickness graft, ear reconstruct second indentation, wedge graft or wolf graft, or, sorry, wedge excision or wolf excision, primary closure, pattern, random pattern flap or wolf graft lower excision. This is another way of doing some nice uh, flaps on the helix which is anti buff type so you close the defect without removing a wedge from the ear lip this is a topic by its own and a presentation by its own but i will run through it very fast so you can do a v excision or w excision like this so less than half of the lip can do a primary closure all right to from two half to two thirds of the lip, you want to do uh, an AB or Eastlander flap. AB doesn't inform the commissioner. Eastlander flap involves the oral commission. Uh, this is carabanzi flap, which is very good flap for lesion in the mid lower lip. So you base it on the severe and inferior labial art from the face. Borrowed run uh, Devon back flab, which is mainly removal of pre-crescentric ailer lesion with advancement. pre uh, ailer crescentric advancement flab for the upper lip. Most operative care antibiotic structure removal for up prevention of Perispectinous malignancy, which is education of the patient. This is uh, a table for summary of the flaps where you can use it and uh, comment about advances and disadvantages. So, in summary, button recognition, don't forget non surgical option, reconstruction letter after care. Thank you. Hello? Hello? Samarik? Hello? Hello. 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 طيب اي اسئله؟ اه بس في اربع اسئله من تفضل Your protocol for malignant melanoma management والله انا بحاول العيان للبلاستيك معظم الاي ان تي ما بيشتغلش الميلانوما بس ات ديباند نورمالي احنا بنديل with melanoma in situ فلو انت first of all لو انت لقيت ليجن بتعمل اكسجن بتا... بلاك ليجن او دارك ليجن بتعمل اكسجن ب 2 ملم مارجن اكسجنال بايوبسي ما بحاولش لو على حسب المكان فين لو انا شغل ان دي كارسينوما ان انا ان سيتيو وكله كويس ممكن احاول اقفل برايمري ولا اسيبها خالص ما احطش اي جرافت أه واستنى الهيستولوجي لما يجي والله لو ميلانوما ان سيتيو افرو اجو فور فيرتر اكسيجن اوف 3 ملم كمان يبقى عندك 5 ملم مارجن وديبند اباوت ذا ديفكت بقى تقفلها برايمري او على حسب بقى تحتاج افلاس اور جراف لو اكتر من كده لا العيان ده بيروح مين للان دي تي ميتنج 
بيشوفوا بقى اللي هو هو ستيج 2 1B هيتعملوا سنتينال نيرف نود بايوبسي ولا لا ديبند اباوت السنتر اللي هو موجود فيه في اليو كي هل هم بيعملوا سنتينال بايوبسيز اور نوت بس الميلانوما في اليو كي مينلي تريتد باي بلاستيك مش ان تي ان ماي مايند ما اعتقدش ان ناس ان تي كتيرة بيشتغلوا حاجة غير اكسجين بايوبسي ب 2 ملم ويساندت ويشوفوا الريزلت وبعد كده اتخسرت في الـ في الام دي تي ميتنج بس نفس الكلام الديستنت فاسز والستليت ليجن ديستنت فاسز ده وذا ان هو ديستنت فاسز في الليمف نود نفسها اورايت ولا ديستنت فاسز بقى في لايك ام في اللنج في البرين في الانتستين في الباقيين الستليت ليجن ده ليجن مكتوين الميلانوما نفسها سو قبل ما تروح للليمف نود في جوه السكين نفسها او حوالين الليمف نود وتهيأ لي ان اللي في الـ في التي ان ام كلاسيفيكيشن اللي هو الاي سي ديشن اتغير بقى عندك ان 1 سي وان 2 سي وان 3 سي وكلهم هاف ستيلي سنتنال لينف نود بايوس طيب اولا ما فيش رول في السكويرز خالص تمام لو هتتعمل في السكويرز ده هيبقى حد بيعمل كلينيكال ترايل ماشي البي سي سي عاده ما بتعملش ميتاسيس فمش هتحتاج سنتنال لينف نود بايوس رايت في الميلانوما اتفقنا دلوقتي ان هو فيري بروجنوستيك فاكتور فاولا هو دايجنوستيك ماشي فمش هيفرق في السرفايفر ريت يعني وهو مش هيحسن التريتمنت بتاع العيان مش هيحسن الدي سرفايفر ريت بس هيحسن المانجمنت الواي اوف مانجمنت فهو اتس دايجنوستيك فاكتور فالجايد لاينز الاخيره بس دي 2016 بيتهيألي الميتا اناليسيز والترايل كان خلصت في 2017 اللي هي قالت ان هو مفيش فرق في السرفايفر ريت بلس سمتايمز في نيجاتيف في السبيسيتي او نيجاتيف فولس فولس بوزيتيف ريزلت بس هو الانديكيشن عشان نرد على سؤالك يبقى ليفل 2 1 بي ليفل 1 بي تي 1 بي ويتش از لو عندك نوما اكتر من 0.8 في الدبس انت عملت اكسجين البايوس وخدتها ب 2 ملم مارجن وعملت الديب اكسجين بتاعك لغايه السبكوتينيوس فات يعني لازم تاخد بارت من السبكوتينيوس فات وانت بتعمل اكسايز ماشي للليجر فلو هي الدبس بتاعه اكتر من 0.8 ممكن تبعته لسنتنال للفريق لو السنتر بيسبورت الكلام اه اولا ده سؤال كويس هو بيجي لك صوره ليجن محطوطه تحت الانر كانسس طيب تتعامل معاها ازاي نفس الكلام انت هتحاول تعمل لها اكسجين باللوست مارجن اللي انت هتاخده ب 2 ملم لو انت مش عارف ايه الليجن دي رايت انت مش عارف هل هي دي ميلانوما هل هي دي بيجمنتد بي سي سي هل هي دي اس سي سي وفي انسريشن فهتاخدها ب 2 ملم ومش هتحاول تقفلها وتشوف الهيستولوجي ازاي الاول اللي هتطلع ايه في حلول بعد كده سكندري انتنشن بس خلي بالك من الكونتراكشن ماشي ممكن تبعتها لاوكتو بلاستيك سيرجن تمام اوكي فهو يعمل فيه فلابس بتتعمل الاي لاب ف ممكن ما, ما تعملش كونتراكشن او تروبي ممكن تحط فول سكين جرافت اوبشن ثالث ممكن تفكر فيه جلابيلر فلاب بس على اساس الدورتورشن انا اعمل ايه غالبا آه على حسب لو هو كبير بتاع ابعتها لاوكي بلاست بس اعمل له اكسجين ب 2 ملم تمام يا دكتور كده هي دي الاسئله اللي الناس سالتها آه على الفيسبوك آه. يعني كتر خيرك شاكرين لذوق حضرتك جدا مش شاكرين لذوق حضرتك شاكرين لذوق حضرتك وشكرا لذوق حضرتك وشكرا لذوق حضرتك وشكرا لذوق حضرتك وشكرا لذ
съответно на Елисаунус, това е нали. Да вън кога е тук във всичко. Да, това е. 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 Това